Hello and welcome to First Post. I am Jigar Mehta and I am back again with another special guest. He is none other than Ifan Pathan. Ifan, welcome to First Post. Uh, Ifan, uh, you have been doing really well in this uh, Syed Mushtaq Ali T20 tournament. So, what's it that is going your way right now? Uh, look, obviously the rhythm is good and uh, you know the swing is swing is there and the swing is there not only the early swing but the late swing. So whenever you have a late swing going for yourself. Um, you know, batsman is always going to have, uh, you know, less time to react because when you have an early swing going from your hand, batsman will get actually a bit early view of where the ball is about to finish from the start start to end. So, for with me right now, it's getting late swing as well. I'm getting a lot of feedback from Parthiv as well as a, as a wicket keeper, um, you know, because wicket keeper will give you always that feedback and he's, he's on the opinion as well that things have got better in terms of, you know, f uh, ball is starting to swing late and when that happens, you know, you're always in the game as a bowler. The other thing which, ha uh, which has actually gone my way is fitness, you know, fitness has been really good. Um, you know, I lost, uh, you know, some weight as well, obviously still trying to lose even more as, as much as I can, but at the same time played the whole season. Yeah. So when you bowl a lot of overs in Ranji Trophy, when you bowl a lot of overs in the, you know, other tournaments as well, just before uh, this zonal Mushtaq Ali, we had, uh, you know, uh, uh, interzonal uh, those, yeah. those matches were there as well. So, you know, played a lot of matches, even some local leagues I played in Baroda as well. So, you know, always in the rhythm in terms of playing matches and everything. So, that really helps. So, match fitness is there and, you know, ra I would rather actually play any matches than, than to just, just practice. Yeah. Yes, you need practice, but at the same time, when you keep playing matches, your rhythm is always there. So, I think these are, these are the main thing and obviously, on the off-season as well, I work really hard in terms of my fitness. So, that has really helped me out, uh, you know, during the season as well. That's why I'm able to run twos as well. Uh, you know, played played longer inning as well, and as well as you know, I'm not feeling any tiredness when, especially, I come to bowl or bat or straight away. I have to go for uh, you know bowling after my batting. Like yesterday, when I scored 26 or something, and yeah. I have to go and straight away bowl the first over. You know, I was up for it. Yeah. So, is there anything different that you are doing in your training regime, or or different with with? Uh, practicing with different kind of balls or tape balls or something like that. For Look, you, you know, you just get the get the help of the best of best physio and the trainer. You know, Ashish Kaushik has always been the physio who actually helps me out during the off season. But at the same time, we have a trainer uh, in Baroda, Afzal. Um, you know, he's been really helping me out in terms of you know, he's actually making me do a lot of functional work. Mm -hmm. So when you do a lot of functional work, which is related to your cricket. Uh, you know the sp the amount of sp uh, time you spend on the on the gym doing the similar activity uh, what you do on the ground that helps and which is what he's been actually pushing me to do as well a lot of running involved uh, you know I I have involved a lot of running as well this year so that has really helped me out. So to remind our viewers uh, we'll we'll get into a bit of nostalgia uh, with India versus Australia series coming up. So uh, Irfan the India versus Australia series is coming up. And uh, and they, the two have locked horns uh, in pretty thrilling and intense battles over the over the years. And you made your debut uh, against Australia. So what are your uh, what are your early memories of your debut? No, it's been fantastic. You know, playing against Australia has always been very challenging. But at the same time, it actually makes your cricket uh, you know go up as well because you know they play aggressive cricket. And if you are an aggressive cricketer as a bowler or or as a batsman you know, you, you tend to actually uh, get better of yourself as well. And, you know, the result and the performance comes out uh, better as well. And I've been, you know, always uh, kind of cricketer who actually likes challenges. And mm -hmm. Australia has been the team where when I made a debut, at that time, they, they really had a really, really good team. Uh, you know, guys like Hayden, Steve Waugh, Gilchrist, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Andrew Simon. Uh, you know, all of them were fantastic. Bradley wa was at his peak as well, yeah. uh, Gillespie, you know, was bowling really well and sharp. Uh, so, you know, Stuart McGill was there in test cricket as well at that time and, you know, he has a fantastic test record. So, it, you know, they had a wonderful team. Uh, so, when you when you play against them, it just gets the best out of you. But you need to be up for it. Okay. So, what were your early memories of, of your debut? Uh, just the whole, whole thing, yeah. Just, uh, you know, spending time with my whole teammates, uh, just sharing the dressing room with guys like... Uh, uh, super super humans, you know, mm -hmm. like Sachin Tendulkar, Rahul Dravid, VVS Lakshman, you know, legends of Indian cricket, Anil Kumble, um, you know, everyone. Sarva Ganguly was a leader, um, and just spending time with them, playing with them, it was just fantastic. And going to play in Australia against Australia, making a debut, it was it was a very special thing for me. You know, getting a cap uh, from Sarva Ganguly mm -hmm. uh, on my debut game um, in Adelaide, 
and that we won after 21 years or so uh, in Australia for the for the longest time we won that game so it was fantastic yeah, I have I had I had a great memory in my first trip uh, of Australia and first trip of my international career as well and you know I remember very very clearly so uh, you you were drafted into the side after Zaheer Khan got injured you got a chance to play and you were just 19 at that time so were you intimidated bowling to the Australian batsman the uh, a formidable batting lineup. No, not really. I'm I'm a kind of character who's always up for the challenges. As I said, you know, when you are up for the challenges and some some characters inbuilt. You know, I have a character inbuilt as well, which is little bit of aggression is there as well. Uh, you know, some obviously balance aggression, but uh, aggressive nature is always been there. So that didn't uh, intimidate. Uh, you know, I didn't got intimidated by you know all the Australian team or all the sledgings and. And the, but I learned so much because I saw when I when I when I went to Australia everything was pro Australia you know newspaper everything you know everything was all about Australia not about touring side so obviously it it is if you are if you are weak minded or if you are you know a bit probably you know a bit inexperienced as well but uh, luckily you know I handled that pretty well like and you know guys like Sachin Baji and guys like Rahul Dravid VVS Lakshman Ganguly everyone helped me around a lot as well so that really helped okay so. Do you remember your first wicket, first test wicket? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it was Matthew Aaron's wicket. Yeah. And uh, I remember, you know, uh, when I got my cap from uh, Dada, Dada said to me that, you know, Irfan, you might not be bowling, uh, you know, uh, with the new ball. You just be ready to bowl first. And I said, you know, whenever I get the chance to bowl, I'll, I'll bowl. Then suddenly I'm seeing is Dada is giving me a new ball. And when I came to bowl that uh, new ball, I think it was about third or fourth over I got third his wicket. Third over, yeah. And um, your third over, yeah. yeah. So um, I remember ball was doing a little bit, you know, of the seam as well. It was doing, uh, doing a bit, and I was ha pretty happy. It, there were a couple of appeals were there as well before, um, uh, before I got Hayden's wicket out. But he was very confident, and he wanted to play on the rise as well. Ball went nicely away, yeah. and you know, I got in, got into game as well. So it was fantastic to get, uh, you know, Matthew Hayden's wicket as a as your first Test wicket. So it was wicket. it was pretty spe special. So ha uh, did you have a specific plan for that wicket, or uh, had you visualized the wicket, or any any plan <laughs> against that uh, <laughs> during that wicket? <laughs> to be honest, you know, I just wanted to go out there, and uh, I just wanted to go out there and just enjoy my my first game, and wanted to just express myself more than anything else. And yes, if the wickets come by, uh, you know, come by that period of time, you know, I would have been, I would have been very happy. You know, I could have actually got second wicket of Ponting as well, where Viru, uh, it went to Viru's hand in the in the slip as well. But it was it, he couldn't, uh, he, he, you know, held on to it. But um, you know, otherwise it would have been much better as well. But you know, for me, just playing and uh, playing against them and just having that experience was fantastic. And take us through that uh, Gilchrist dismissal in Sydney. Um, look, uh, you know, ball was reversing a bit. Uh, it was later in the day as well, especially mm -hmm. when late, uh, you know, in the evening time, generally bowlers get to ta get tired as well. Uh, but you know, I was 19, I was giving my best, and uh, I remember uh, Paji was standing on mid off and he was asking me, Irfan, you know, try kar round the wicket, say try kar. So I bowled few balls from the round the wicket, and uh, you know, uh, I was uh, I was actually very keen for him to bowl from the over the wicket. So I went to uh, Sachin Paji again and I said, Paji, I'm very keen to bowl from the over the wicket and I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'll try to bowl full. It's reverse swing nicely and hopefully he'll, he'll, he will miss it. So he said, okay, if you're feeling confident, just go there and uh, bowl from over the wicket. And I bowled that ball particularly really full, try to bowl Yorker and it went nicely. And I think it was, it was like a dream ball. Uh, yeah. I exactly the way, it went the way exactly I wanted uh, from the hand and uh, the way it pushed and the way it moved late as well. And yeah, I got his wicket. It was very, very special uh, delivery and very close to my heart as well. Okay, so uh, in that match, there was another special innings played. Uh, Sachin Tendulkar's all on leg side 241, and you were a brief part of that uh, yeah, innings. You, you were, you were at the other end. So, so what? What was your reaction after watching that innings from the dressing room as well as from the from the middle? I was just, uh, I was just so happy to just play alongside him, uh, being a partner as well, you know, he was actually, after the over, he used to just, uh, you know, give me that fist bump, bump. Uh, fist bump, yeah. and uh, I was just, you know, for me it was like a dream, as I said, you know, playing your first trip and uh, playing with guys like Sachin Tendulkar, who has been absolute legend of Indian cricket and world cricket for that matter, yeah. but, um, you know, just, 
e- even now i remember as well some of the things he said while playing that inning as well and uh, i was really happy to just just being around him yeah. he he played one shot i remember you know uh, i think it was uh, brett or gillespie bounced bounced him and he just flicked it uh, for four while jumping yeah and i was like how can he play that shot and i was just on you know, off uh, you know the whole whole situation you know for that matter and uh, it was really happy re- re- really fulfilling uh, satisfying uh, situation for me to just go out there and just be part of whatever little way of that inning so yeah. it was fantastic i remember coming out of that inning as well and john was saying that right very well then you played well he, you know those small little inning with a such in partnership you had it was fantastic so i was really happy <laughs> so uh, did you have any indication that he he's going to play all the shots on the leg side or did he give that indication during the during his innings or anything like that not really we just we just got to know only when he d- when he did that yeah. you know he was actually very well he was just leaving all the ball on the off stumps yeah. and majority of the balls uh, he played on the on side he just waited for his game and he scored a brilliant inning and it was still one of the best inning in australia by an indian player yeah so you you went in as a 19 year old then you made your debut so after that series the expectations from irfan patan went sky high so how did you handle that oh it just come naturally you know when you actually become mature in in one trip and in in that trip i just realized you know what kind of potential i i have as well you know getting some of the big names as well under your belt like gil chris steve or ricky ponting demin martin you know some of the some of the big names and when you get those wickets you always feel confident when you feel confident you know your your confidence level goes sky high and the expectation from the people as well as expectation from your own yeah. it just goes uh, goes really high as well but it just becomes your second second nature especially when you are in confidence and i was in pretty much uh, very high confidence so how did you how, how did you how, how did that tour change you as a player and as a person the confidence actually which australian trip my first trip gave me was fantastic because you know when you take big wickets uh, as i as i mentioned uh, gilchrist and steve o and uh, ponting martin and you know when you take those wickets you know it just gives you so much confidence and when you actually competing with the best because at that time australian team was the best team uh, mm-hmm. going around number 1 team in one day cricket even in test cricket as well because they had so much so many records were going for themselves so it was uh, it was a great experience for me to actually just play against them and then doing well it just gives you wings yeah. right uh, it just gives you wings to fly and my confidence was sky high after that trip as well and the expectation as you asked me it just you know you need to look after your own expectation but obviously people's expectation goes high as well and because you have done well uh, you know you able to actually cope with that expectation pretty pretty easily So did any of the Australian players have a word with you after the tour or after your debut or uh, some some any of the uh, uh, touring pa- uh, any of the host host players uh, interact with you Absolutely Steve Wo actually did it in uh, in Canberra as well um, we had a game there as when well. he came and spoke uh, very nicely as well and uh, it was very nice of him uh, at the same time after the series went over Uh, we went to their dressing room as well in australian dressing room and um, you know uh, St- uh, R- uh, bretley was actually talking about nice things about you know my bowling action and everything so we had general talk about uh, you know general bowling and just cricket as well so you know it's just uh, just an experience which you remember for a very long time it's been so many years now i still remember those uh, experience which i had there so apart from the confidence that you got what was the biggest learning curve in that Uh, for me personally it was it was like you know you can compete and you can actually do well uh, it was a confidence booster for me uh, uh, you know it, that trip specially so that was my le- big learning curve but at the same time you know try to actually know your strength that i'm able to bowl swing the ball and it's mm-hmm. all about swinging late it's all about uh, you know going out there and just expressing yourself so there are a couple of things i learn as well there are many things i've learned um, uh, but at the same time these are the main basic things that belief on myself on my cricket was actually became so high and that's what i learned that i can achieve anything yeah. at the international level and what did you learn from the uh, uh, australian bowlers that time they had a r- good bo- bowling lineup apart from there was no magra hmm. i guess but there was uh, gelespi and bretley uh, and others so uh, did you try to learn from them because you were just 19 years of yeah. age and they they were some big names uh, in the australian lineup you, you just watch you just watch them and you just actually try and uh, um you know see what they're doing what they do, what you know what they're avoiding and everything so you you learn that but basically 
in Indian team dressing room there was so much experience there yeah. as well. Anil Bai was there as well, so I keep talking to Anil Bai. I keep talking to you know the coaches. I keep talking to the senior guys. What experience we had, so I didn't had to look to actually gain some experience any other team than our own team. Yeah. So for me that was the that was the thing to actually just keep asking question to all the seniors. So what is it that makes Australia such a dangerous side? We have seen that over the years. Every team that has come out has been a really dangerous side. So, what is it that you think that makes it a <coughs> really dangerous side? I think they keep playing aggressive cricket, mm. and when you keep playing aggressive cricket, majority of the time or not, you will actually able to you will able to success more su succeed more time than not, because you know they say yes, uh, cricket it's all about talent, fitness, and everything. But it's here. If you are if you are positive enough in your mind in your mindset, I think you'll be able to uh, do really well for longer period of time. And I think that's what Australia has been doing, and they have actually kept it in them for you know all the time I've been seeing for last quite a few years as well. So which is I think which is their biggest strength. And uh, with Australia, there is always an intimidating factor which is there. So where did you experience any kind of sledging? During your debut or during your uh, first series? Absolutely, yeah. 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 Hayden's and guys like Hayden, while they used to bat as well, they used to talk, and I used to love that. You know, I used to love that challenge as well because I'm not a kind of guy who's going to keep my mouth shut as well. Yeah. So it was a, it was a fair challenge. Yeah, you know, now you meet Matthew Hayden. He's a totally different guy. Such a nice guy. He'll he'll come out and he speak to you as well. Yeah. Um. And uh, but at the same time, when that when they used to play, they used to be very aggressive. I, if you you know if you appeal something as well they'll 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 have something to say uh, they always say something but you need to give them back as well like you know you you playing against them you need to give them back so do you have any memories of your first sledging that happened with you um there there were quite a few on that trip mm. but i remember the final one when i actually went for runs and him hayden i remember actually when i came to bat as well and he was laughing about my bowling figure and he was saying a lot of things which I shouldn't be saying in uh, in here as well. Then I said something to Damien Martin as well when I clapped him, but I didn't say much. But I got fine yeah. uh, for that as well. So uh, they were they were pretty smart in uh, sledging as well. Um, they might do actually keep the hand down on their on their face and cover their face and yeah. cover their mouth and they they speak. For me, I was young, I was inexperienced, and I sometimes I reacted in a different way which I should not have uh, reacted. But yeah, uh, it's 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 all fun and learning learning curve. Yeah, so uh, you played three series against three test series against Australia. So which one was the toughest that you? Uh, which team was the toughest that you faced in those three series? Like um, um, uh, look, the toughest was uh, in terms of cricket wise, definitely my first trip mm -hmm. because you know you got to learn so much and it's all new experience. You are bit, I was betting an experienced player as well. But at the same time, on and off the field toughness was 2008 series because there so many things were happening as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I think 2008 was the toughest when it comes to just touring and playing everything. So that was your experience. Yeah. But uh, considering o the Australian point of view, which was the toughest side? That you played against, I think 2004. 2004. I think that was the toughest side because, you know, from the openers to all the middle order, low, lower order batsmen, they all were aggressive batsmen. And then if you bowl any wrong ball or any wrong wrong length, if you give width, you are in trouble. If you bowl slightly fuller, fuller you are in trouble. If you bowl slightly back of length, you are in trouble. So you have to be very precise to bowl your length and actually able to do something with the ball. Then you will survive there. Okay, so. Coming to that 2007-8 series, amidst all the monkey gate uh, rumors that were flowing that India might mm -hmm. get back uh, home and and there were there was a lot of uh, stuff that went on on that tour. So how did the, that affect you as as a player and as an individual? Um, look, it just because we were that uh, you know when you were in a team, you have to be in a team like you know in whatever situation you are in, and we were all together. Mm. Anil Bai did a fantastic job as a leader uh, to handle that situation, and he handled that situation with a grace. And uh, you know we 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 were all with him, we were all backing him, we were all uh, you know supporting our team, and we were able to do whatever it takes to actually have the integrity of the Indian cricket as well. So we we were able to do that, and uh, you know we were all uh, the good thing was that we were all together, and it was fantastic uh, in that situation. And 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 luckily we did well as well after that game. It yeah. was a Perth, and 
I got a man of the match as well. Luckily, yeah. I feel uh, I feel very uh, you know proud to actually when I look back after this whole situation happened and then I, I was able to actually perform well for my team in especially in Perth while batting and bowling as well and we won that game. Yeah. It was very special. Uh, the whole tour was after that became really sweet and special. Yeah. So uh, you spoke about that Perth man of the match. Uh, did that uh, monkey gate thing make you more determined as a player to? go there and perform and make sure you win the test because it it broke australia's winning streak also and it was a really special win for india because no no i think since 1958 no team had beaten them in perth so did that whole episode uh, monkey gate episode make you more de determined to go there and perform? yeah i think we became very focused after the whole uh, you know uh, the whole issues was happening on the field uh, i think we all uh, every team member became really uh, really focused and we all one thing we want to do if we go back we go back but if you want to play we need to play best cricket of our uh, you know our time and uh, we did that in the next game so uh, zaheer khan is considered to be one of the greatest left arm fast bowlers india has produced absolutely what has been his impact on your career you know he when he was actually being the india's best bowler uh, when he made a debut as well i was a young junior guy from baroda cricket he played for baroda as well yeah. and obviously we we all admire him and for try to follow him as well in terms of his action and um, you know his uh, his aggression and obviously that that sort of but him being being a senior as well like you know there are there have been a couple of time as well when we when i have spoken to him um, you know just just to see him as well but at the same time actually we used to just follow him what kind of food he is eating and just by watching him what kind of training he has been doing it, it does help you know when you have a senior guy who is actually doing really well and playing for your state by just even if you you know don't talk or l talk less because you know being he is being him being senior you just learn so many things just by watching him so I, I learn a lot uh, you know from him in terms of uh, you know watching him and talking to him as well quite a few times um, and yeah it just always been very helpful. Okay, uh, and uh, coming back to the Australia thing, uh, is there any special preparation required to face Australia uh, when you when you uh, were facing Australia or if any other player? Is there any special uh, preparation that is required while facing Australia? No, just you, they you just should know that they they always play aggressive cricket even if the wicket is fallen. So they'll play aggressive cricket, and if they keep coming hard at you, you need to make sure that you keep coming hard as well. And uh, you need to make sure that if they say something, you give them back. Okay. So I think that's what I believe. Okay. So uh, coming back to Irfan Pathan, when you talk about Inf Irfan Pathan, you cannot miss that special hat trick, that beautiful hat trick against Pakistan. So take us through those three wickets uh, of that hat trick. Well, I remember bowling first few balls and uh, ball didn't swing as much as I would have liked. And uh, but then obviously I knew that wicket is very helpful to bowl on, and I did that. And then um, you know I tried to b take the ball away from the stump, and you know try to take his edge, and which actually you know I did that. And Salman Bhatt. Yeah, Salman yeah. Bhatt, and I I was able to do that, and uh, it was in the straight went into the slip in Rahul Bhai's end, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. keeper. Yeah, and uh, you know. He he caught it and uh, you know I knew it that you know if the ball is swinging if I need to bowl full even if I go for four I need to make sure that I bowl full yeah. and Yunus Khan because before that match he scored runs and he keeps scoring run, runs against us yeah. so it was very crucial wicket uh, if I get it in the second one that's what I was that was uh, was going on in my head and then second ball I bowled and I bowled all three balls I bowled I the way I wanted uh, probably the third ball actually did more than I expected but in terms of the second ball the way I wanted the way I wanted to bowl full and try to hit him on the pads and that was my forte as well like you know yeah. and uh, still is you know when I try to swing the ball in and try to actually hit the pads and try to get the LBW as, w as well with the late swing and exactly it happened and Yunus Khan got LBW out third wicket was uh, you know uh, Yusuf uh, yeah Mahmoud Yusuf yes. and he came and he was he actually got out uh, quite a few times uh, against me so I was I was actually going back and I was thinking, you know, this is Mamad Yusuf, uh, I'm on a hat-trick for the third time because before that as well, uh, in test cricket, I was a couple of times uh, very close to hat-trick, okay. couple of times I have taken uh, two wickets in two balls, but I didn't, I couldn't take hat-trick before that, so I was thinking so many things in my head that if, what if this doesn't happen and then 
then I was talking to myself, okay, even if it doesn't happen, doesn't happen, you know, at least you got two wickets, just feel good about yourself. There were so many things were going on and there was a thought as well that what should I do, just try to bowl the straight one or try to bowl the in-swing, uh, you know, so I said, okay, let's back my instinct, let's back my strength and I'll try to bowl in-swing and try to hit him on the pads as well. And I bowled that delivery and it went, it went right on the good length and it actually came in like an off spinner you know it, it swung so much it literally uh, you know it it came in big time and i thought you know it will hit hit the pads but there was so many uh, so much gap on between his uh, hand uh, his bat and, and the pads it went uh, to the to the gates and yeah it was a, it was a fantastic uh, thing to achieve because when i look back as well a lot of people talk about that hat trick and it was very special deliveries all three deliveries were very special for me and you know, I, I still feel very happy to look back those videos and uh, feel fantastic about it. But if you, if I ask you to pick one delivery that was really special, which one would you pick? Definitely, Mamad Yusuf's one, Muhammad the bold one there, okay. which, you, which which actually got me hat trick. Okay, but didn't you think that uh, let yar uh, Yunus, I I bowled an in swinger to Yunus, so I would be because I, all the deliveries. Uh, the two deliveries that uh, one one went away from the left hander and one came in from the uh, came in to the right hander. So didn't you think that I might try to bowl an out swinger because he might be expecting an in swinger now? Absolutely, that's what I said. You know, I, I did thought for a second that mm -hmm. should I actually bowl that uh, straight going delivery to Mahmud Yusuf or not? And then I said, you know, let's back my ability, let's back back my strength, and which is bowling in. You know, and, th and that's what I did. Luckily, I did that. <laughs> and what was the feeling after that? Oh, the feeling, I still look back at the videos and I was yeah. thinking, why did I make that face which is going here and there? <laughs> uh, because, you know, the my whole jaw was actually going on the left and my face was going right. I, I was so excited. Uh, I didn't know how I was reacting it as well. Whole team was really happy. Dressing room was really happy. The whole country is uh, really proud about that hat trick as well. Yeah. And yeah, uh, the excitement was something, uh, something, um, something else. And uh, so, what next for Irfan Pathan now? Look, you know, the, uh, there's uh, there's a lot of cricket coming up. Uh, hopefully, you know, there is an auction as well. Let's see what happens in that. And but the good thing is everything is going well for my for me. Uh, there is a game tomorrow as well, and I'm looking forward to do well as well. And yeah, there is still that dream uh, to play for the country, uh, which is always going to be alive as long as I'm going to be playing cricket. And hopefully, if not today, it will happen tomorrow. That's what I believe. And if I keep believing that, eventually it will happen. Okay. So that's it from me here. Uh, we had a special guest today, Irfan Pathan. Uh, we went back on the nostalgia trip. And it was good uh, reminiscing some of the best moments of his uh, debut and uh, his debut against Australia. The India versus Australia series is coming up. And uh, it promises to be a really good one if uh, Australia play. play really well to their strengths. Thanks a lot Irfan Patan for joining in. Thanks a lot viewers for tuning in. Goodbye.